Good afternoon and thanks for joining me. I just wanted to do a quick project with you guys. Um, it's something I've been working on. I've made quite a few of these for gifts and I just thought it would be really fun to show it. So um, let's get started in paint. If you have Microsoft, um, you want to use paint or any other kind of, um, you know, creating tool, any tool that you can do this in, okay? Except for in so art because you can't modify things very well in so art. Um, so you want to start it in paint if you have it. It's free and it's really easy to work with, okay? So let's just jump right in. I'm going to open a new one. I'm going to choose don't save. And I'm going to go straight up here to our oval and I'm going to make a circle. Okay. Right down here, it'll tell you your size. It'll tell you if you're 100 by 100 or 125 by 107. So you'll be able to tell whether you're in a, um, in a perfect circle or not. I got really lucky with that 100 by 100 earlier. <laughs> really lucky. Okay. So it doesn't have to be perfect if you're making it for, you know, yourself and, and others, but having it perfect is always nice. Okay, so this is 103 by 103. So we're going to take that one and we're going to just basically overdo it. We're not going to copy and paste it. We're going to do the same one over the top of it, okay? And we'll use the bottom, the one that we've already created as a guide, as well as watching our size down on the bottom. So we want it 103 by 106. Oops. I mean, we want it 103 by 103. Should have left that alone. <laughs> there we go. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to create just a little overlap like this. Okay, that's going to create the ends of the bone. Okay, and then we're going to go up here to select and we're going to copy. We're going to paste, click out of there and paste. And then we're going to move this over here. Let's see, hold on. Good lines will help me. That one. Okay. And I know the grid lines are kind of hard to see on the on the video, um, but it makes it easier for me to place things correctly. Okay, so if you go, if you need to do that, just go over here to view and choose grid line. And then once you're done with that, just go back to home and we're going to choose the rectangle. We're going to choose to fill this rectangle with a solid color of white. Okay. So we're going to start over here. And we basically just want to kind of cut off all of these edges. Oh, wait. I want my color number one to be white. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm sorry, I'm confusing myself, causing myself problems. I want it to be black. I don't know why I try to change that because I want to be able to use these pieces right here as the side. Okay. This looks like it needs to go up a little bit more. Okay. There we go. That's better. Okay. Sorry if that seemed like it took a little while. Sometimes placing things take me a little while. <laughs> so hopefully you'll get through it a little bit faster. Okay, so with this part, we're going to choose the oval again, and we're going to choose to fill it with all white, okay? And this is why I was trying to jump ahead, and I was messing you guys and myself up by doing that, okay? 
So then you're just going to click out. This is easier than trying to use the um, the eraser because you can cover more ground at once, in my opinion. Sometimes you have to go in and go over little pieces, like that annoying part. But you just cover it. Click out of it. Cover it, click out of it. And it's perfect. Okay. Okay. So there you go with the dog bone shape, okay? Now this will work fine for felty or anything else, but we're going to make a key fob out of it and not really a key fob, but the thing that dangles from the dog's keychain, like the, um, from the dog's um, collar. There's like a little, you know, the piece, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I'll show it to you in the video part of this, okay? So um, what we're going to do for that is we're going to go up here to the rectangle, and we're going to go ahead and change this color one back to black. And we're going to go over here, and we're going to make it about that wide. I think that looks pretty good. It, you know, it doesn't have to be precise, but if you need it to be precise, just take your time, okay? I'm going to make it a little bit shorter than that. All right, so there we go. We have our key fob design. Now we're going to turn this back to white, and we're going to go in here, and we're going to open this up, okay? Using the shapes as erasers is a really fast way to cover a lot of ground and so art. And you don't have to do a lot of, or not in so art, but in paint, you don't have to do a lot of squiggling with your mouse. Okay, so here we go. This is our whole design. We're going to go, I'm going to go up here and turn off the grid line. And then I'm going to go home. I'm going to choose select. Oops. Selected too high. Okay, I'm going to select just enough around it. And I'm going to choose crop. All right, and then I'm going to select all. Copy, and then I'm going to open my sew art. I have mine down on my bottom bar, but wherever yours is, find it and go ahead and open it up. And in sew art, we're going to um, choose the applique center line button, and we're going to um, make it into a bean stitch applique. Okay. All right. So we're going to go here to file. And, or not to file, we're going to go to edit, to paste, and that brings up our design, okay? And let's go ahead and crop it a little bit more so that we can maximize our hoop. Okay. All right, and then we'll have to double check the colors. Looks like there's already only two colors, so that's great. I'm gonna go ahead and use the fill region button and fill everything in anyways. Just makes me feel good about it. it makes me feel like all the colors are bleeding together and working good. Okay, so from here, we just have to go to the stitch image button and you can resize it in here. I'm going to go ahead and resize it and sew it pro since that's where I'm going to end it. But here's where you would resize it. Mine's already a perfect size for my hoop. I don't need to do anything. Okay. And so you choose the stitch image button. And then we choose the applique center line. This is going to give us our three steps. And we need to choose scene. And we need to change the height to 2 and the length to 25. Going to give it a nice sturdy stitch and still give you the cute bean around the side, okay? 
All right, so, and then we're gonna go ahead and we're going to choose right here at this corner for it to start, but right on the, the, the flat part of this corner, okay? And that's gonna give us three different spots or three different sew outs, but you're not gonna see that in sew art, okay? But it is done. So we're gonna go here to File, Save As, and it's gonna pop up a screen that gives us a save image file for our desktop. I'm gonna go ahead and save bone, snap tab. And um, I got a tip from the owner of SNS and he said that if we save it in a tip format from SOAR, it, it preserves our colors better. So after we've done all that, you know, bringing down of colors, and then if we save it as a JPEG, then it's going to repixelate, and you know, you're going to try to open it again, and it's going to give you all your colors back, and you have to go through all that trouble again. So, with that, um, I haven't tried it out too much, I haven't tested it, but I'm going to go ahead and save this as a TIFF just because, okay? So, I'm going to choose save, and then it's going to pop up a window for saving our embroidery file. I'm going to also save that on the desktop as the bone snap tab, but as a PES file. I'm going to double check my size and make sure that it'll fit in my hoop. And I'm going to choose save. Okay. And it's done. All right. I like to leave SOAR open just in case I need to go back and forth. So I'm just going to minimize this. I'm going to minimize paint as well. And I'm going to go ahead and open So What Pro. Okay, we have So What Pro open, and I'm going to choose the open button, and it's going to come up to the last place I think that I brought something open, and for me it was the desktop. So I'm going to choose Bone Snap Tab PES. Click open. All right, and so here's my bean stitch, and it gives me three different colors so that it tells me that there's three different stitch outs, okay? These two are going to be running stitches and this is our bean stitch, which is our final stitch, okay? So I'm going to change them to three different colors and something's going on with my Sew Up Pro that I need to address, but I haven't, even though I saved it all in Brother, it's bringing it up as this weird Add Melody Polyester. So I'm working with it. <laughs> okay, so this is my die line. And over here, you can give yourself a little note, die line. And number two, I'm just gonna stick in this upper region up here so that it's easy to change for me. Number two is my tack down. Number three is actually gonna be number step number four, but we're gonna go ahead and do something here that I like to do on, on key fobs is to make a copy of the final stitch, click out, and then click paste. And it gives me two final stitches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit, join threads, join all adjacent threads of same color. Okay. And that's going to make it where that bean stitch goes twice. It does a double stitch around to make it super sturdy. Okay. All right. So what's going to be, what we're going to end up changing here at the end though, is going to be, um, we're going to have four stitches and number three is going to actually be number four. Cause we're going to go ahead and put my friend's dog's name here in the middle. And, um, and it's going to be a little gift for him, but we need that to stitch out before the final stitch. So I'll show you how to do that. Go ahead and go into file and click merge and choose your font. I'm going to use the font from Planet Applique because I love them so much. <laughs> okay, mine's in my external hard drive. And I'm sorry I'm not more help when people ask questions about it. It's just one that my husband bought at um, Walmart and I've I save all of my extra stuff on it because I'm using my son's computer. So I don't really know anything about formatting or anything like that. <laughs> so I'm just kind of throwing that out there. 
Um, but I do have one and it's really cool. So, all right. So um, I'm going to go ahead and go into kind of applique font. And I'm really loving the Lauren font right now, but I'm going to go ahead and go with the Hawaiian font because Poet is an old dog and the Lauren font is kind of fun and young. And just oh, the Hawaiian is pretty and thick and I just think that he deserves to have a nice, a nice one. <laughs> that makes any sense. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to choose the smallest one from my machine. And that's going to give me a really pretty P. Look how pretty that is. Okay. And then from there, we can go ahead and click File Merge each time and choose each one. Or you can choose Icons. And make sure it's in alphabet mode. And then if it is, go ahead and go down and finish your name. You have to pay attention to the way that they're lined up so you know which one to choose. Poet is his name. Okay. All right. So from there, you can click icons again, and it'll give you back your, your thing, your list over here. And what we're going to do is we're going to move this P over just a little bit. Trying to help it match everything else. Click out of that. Go up here to edit. Join threads. Join all adjacent threads of same color. Choose OK. And that's going to make it where Poet is all just one. And I can make it a little bit more balanced. OK. Alrighty, so then from here, we're going to go up here to order threads. And we're going to make sure that's number one, number two, number three, and number four need to switch. So we're going to put three here. Oops, <laughs> three there and four there. Okay, choose OK. All right, so it's going to give us our die line. It's going to give us our tack down. It's going to tack, it's going to write out poet's name. <laughs> poet. <laughs> and then number four is going to give us a double seam stitch. Okay. So there you go. That's all you need to know about digitizing a creating the design, digitizing it in SOAR, and then um, adding a name in So What Pro. And if you want to hang on just a minute um, and continue watching, I will sew it out and you'll see it and all of the tools that you'll need to complete this project. Alrighty? Okay, guys, I'm over at my machine and I just wanted to show you. Oh, geez, sorry. All right, I just wanted to show you real quick. I'm using a piece of craft foam to make this strong because if you don't put a piece of something in there that's a little thick it could bend or just be too flimsy especially with as much as a dog moves so I recommend sticking a piece of craft craft foam in as well um, underneath your your topping and then your it will also help that um, your font be really pretty and then this is just a piece of scrap oil cloth I have for the backing. Okay, so it's going to give us a die line. And then we're going to put our craft foam down and our topper down. And then it's going to tack it all down. Then it's going to print out the name. And then we're going to take the hoop off. We're going to put this onto the back. And then it'll do step number four. Okay, and that's going to be that bean stitch and it's going to double it so that it's super secure. Alrighty, so I'm going to put a lot of this into fast forward. And here we go.